What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Now in this one you join me in an SV25, uh, we're going to be doing the tactical or Afghan approach into uh, Mim, it's also known as Basil al-Assad if you have a look at the map or sometimes also known as Latakia. Now for those of you guys that don't know, this is actually a real Russian airbase in Syria right now and it is an impenetrable fortress. Uh, protected by the S-400, uh, in, uh, obviously in DCS we don't have that, but we have the um, high-digit SAMS mod which gives you the SA-20, which is a little bit closer to, you know, the real thing, uh, which I have got this thing populated with all the bells and whistles uh, from doing a whole bunch of research and, you know, just trying to get it as accurate as I possibly could, as well as uh, the TORs, which are there in real life also, and then in real life they have a thing called the Panzer, uh, in here we have a thing called Tunguska, which is kind of like the closest, um, I guess, relative to that more modern um, surface to air missile sort of defense AAA uh, system thing. On top of that, there's a Syrian SA-2 side closer to the sea, uh, which is also here in the game, and they've, they've modeled it freaking amazing. Uh, they've really, really got it down. Um, the only thing is the airbase is kind of a combination of the new and the old um, because currently, you know, it's been redone in the last couple of years. If you have a look at satellite images, if you've been keeping track, which I have, um, you know, they built a whole bunch of hangars. They got rid of some other stands and stuff. And in the game currently, we kind of have like 50-50. You have both the new and the old, uh, which is fine. You know, I'm not complaining. It's great that they have it like, you know, still very, very close to reality. Um, and I've even managed to position the S-400 or the S-300 in the game. Um, pretty much in its real location, which is pretty cool after doing some research. I've just been, you know, tinkering with this airbase and it's going to uh, appear in another mission that me and my buddy Spartan Pilot are doing because we are going to try and defeat the S-300, or the more advanced version of the S-300 here. And it is, we're going to do it in a very sneaky special way, which I think is going to be a really cool mission to put up. And uh, you guys, you guys are going to love it. You're going to love it. Uh, but for now... I completely digress. We are doing something totally different. We're doing the SU-25 Afghan approach, which is basically a sort of spiral approach in towards the runway to avoid, basically stay as high as possible for as long as possible and make as, as steep an approach as is physically uh, feasible to try and uh, minimize the chances of getting hit by a man pad, right? And the reason it's called the Afghan style approach is because that's what the Russians called it when they started testing the SU-25 in Afghanistan in 1980 quickly realized that man pads were a bit of an issue and you know they developed this kind of like steep approach and that's not just the SU-25 that's all aircraft you see IL-76 is doing you know very steep approaches spiraling approaches in towards the runway it's nothing new it's just the Russians call it Afghan style because that is really where it was highly necessary I mean certainly uh, Basil al-Assad or Humey Meme is somewhere that is extremely applicable because uh, you know they have MI-24s flying around the base um, making sure that there's no threats uh, when aircraft come in, take off and land. So uh, what I've done for this one is uh, basically we set up an SU-25 and there is a chance that there might be some man pads in the area. Uh, I don't know if there will be, there might be. Um, so we're going to try and make the approach. It, to make this approach as steep as possible, obviously you want to have minimized the amount of thrust. You want to have min thrust, maximum braking going, right? And uh, maintain that all the way from the beginning of your uh, pattern altitude, which in our case we're going to use 2,000 meters. And then we're going to try and glide it down, essentially glide it down, but with all the drag gear, etc. Uh, in towards the runway. So we're coming in from the northeast here uh, and we're just going to fly kind of like a gentle circle around. Our, our circuit altitude is very high. It's going to be 2,000 meters. And as we're down, when we're going to configure, we're essentially, the SU-25 is, is a good aircraft for this because it's, it's a bit of a challenge. Um, you need to, it, it's a bit like an airliner that I fly in for work, the 737, in the sense that it doesn't go down and slow down at the same time. It does one or the other, but not both. So what you got to do is you got to drag out, you know, basically... Uh, get it down to the speed that you need to for, you know, flaps, gear, etc. And then you got to start that descent and then you got to keep it going. And because it's quite lethargic and it's got a lot of momentum and it, it's not like a fighter where you can go super high alpha and just, you know, you know, come around the corner and just slow down. Or if you're a little high, just, you know, pull a little kind of like G and you're done. Uh, SU-25 is not like that. I don't know the actual procedures for doing this. I have tried to search 
uh, all over the internet, Google, etc. Reading some of the Russian stuff as well, just to see if someone has written something about the actual procedure of doing this kind of like spiral approach you know like what speeds heights you know like what are the ballpark figures uh none of that exists so we're gonna just basically use common sense and you know we're gonna we're gonna try and replicate it what i think they would have done in real life um basically always keeping visual with the runway and doing a spiral idle descent approach we have two good exercises you're clear to disconnect the headset we'll see you on the left with the pin thanks a lot All right, let's do this. So 2,000 meters, that is gonna be our circuit height, which uh, is pretty high. Uh, it's over 6,000 feet, actually. Um, now, if you're looking at the RWR, that's just all the uh, friendly SAMs uh, base here at uh, Basel Al-Assad that are uh, making all those beeps, so don't worry about that. Uh, man pads obviously not gonna come up uh, so we'll just have to purely visually try and identify where they are so we're coming in down one here um, just, uh, going to try and slow down configure like I say because the SU-25 doesn't go down and slow down at the same time it's a bit like a 737 that I fly in that sense uh, it does one or the other it's got a lot of momentum and we're getting ready to pop flares in cases in funny going on so right passing 480 kilometers an hour let's get um, get the air brakes out first let's get the first stage of flaps combat flaps right uh, looking for any man pad threats all right it's gonna slow down a touch more and get our landing flap out. Let's get the landing lights out. That will give us a tiny bit more drag because uh, they'll pop out from underneath the wings. Uh, actually, I need to put the gear down, don't I, first, and then, and then they'll come out. There we go. Now they're out. Perfect. Right. So we're aiming to do this as an idle, uh, idle descent. Uh, we're looking for man pads left and right. So constantly keep the scan going. Look out, in, out, in. Uh, making sure we don't overspeed the airplane as well. We are looking good. It's looking pretty good. We should get some. Um, MI-24 is uh, taking off to patrol the base as well. Uh, what is that? Is that a is that a trail I just saw? No. I have a feeling as if I saw a uh, a con trail, but no. Okay, so it's uh, MI-24 is taking off. Uh, right, we're just as you can see, we're a little high. So just uh, in terms of energy management, we're going to do a bit of an S turn. Uh, to try and kill some of the, um, let's make sure everything's good on this side. Yeah, so just doing a bit of an S turn to try and kill the height. Uh, keeping it coordinated now with the rudder. It's a bit more rudder, there we go. SU-25 uh, requ requires some good stick and rudder skills. Alright, uh, still an idle. Oh, got a got a contrail. Flare, flare, flare. Got a contrail on the right. Right, concentrate on the flying. How are you looking? Looking good. Still an idol. Oh, look, the. Uh, MI-24s are attacking that now, so that's good. They're covering us. Uh, 
Uh, slight right crosswind, so keep popping flares. That's the MI-24s. Get their air brakes retracted because I don't want to... There we go. Air brakes coming out again. Perfect. That was a close call. Woo! Oh, sweating here. Right, let's get this puppy slowed down. And just for reference, I did not know where the threat's going to come from. Uh, there was a possibility of no threat or some threat, and it could be, it could be from any direction. So, in case you guys think like I set up the mission and I knew where it was going to come from, I had no idea because uh, I've done it in such a way where it could be, it could be literally anywhere. Right. Well, that worked out. So, MI-24s in real life do fly around here to try and protect. Uh, aircraft that are taking off and landing uh, and let's clean up whilst we're doing this air brakes coming in uh, flaps getting retracted okay uh, let's get the taxi light on there we go oh, I just look I saw another trail there ha huh. They obviously haven't. Uh, they obviously haven't um, taken care of that manpads threat. So that's interesting. Uh, anyway, let's taxi to our stand. Try to recreate this base as uh, closely as I could to real life. So it's a uh, SU-35 there, SU-34, a couple of SU-24s, and a maintenance facility there at the very back. Uh, now in real life, these hangars on the left. Uh, they do exist now, they are new, uh, but the stands on the right hand side where the SU-24s are, they are now completely gone in real life. So it's kind of, so that's what I'm saying in terms of this, <laughs> uh, this being kind of a 50-50 between uh, real life and um, where you, what it used to be and what it is now. Because these are actually missing, uh, these are gone, these stands are gone in real life. Uh, but nonetheless, I am not complaining. There's a couple of SU-25s here on the uh, on the left. For some reason, I mean, in real life, these hangars do house SU-35s and SU-34s, uh, but uh, for whatever reason, you can't put an SU-35 or 27 or 34 inside here, just because it seems like it's too big. Um, not sure. Let's just get rid of the. Uh, taxi lights, not to blind anyone, and I'm just gonna, just gonna park up so that the ground crew can push us back into the hangar. Just gonna turn around. Okay. There we go. Right, they can push us back in. Uh, oh, I could see, uh, my 24 is popping the flares there. Obviously, something's going on. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that video. We made it. Uh, I tried to make it kind of as realistic as I possibly could, you know, to try and sort of replicate what could happen in real life. Um, and as you can see, the challenge with this was uh, to basically try and keep the speed under control whilst being an idle all the way from downwind and trying to manage your energy however you need to, because you can't, you know, real pilot can never calculate it perfectly. You know, you've got wind to contend with, you know, if you've got a lot of headwind, you might drop short. If you've got a lot of tailwind, you might just keep, you know, overflying and be too high. Uh, there's just lots of factors that you'd have to take into account in real life. So, you know, the best way to manage a situation like this to do an idle descent is to try and do some S-turns if you can. Uh, now, another uh, thing that we could try and do is potentially side slip it down. And I'm actually thinking of maybe doing a separate video on side slipping and doing a side slip approach because um, that is kind of very interesting. It's cross controlled and it, it requires a lot of coordination. Um, and the, in terms of aerodynamics, there's actually quite a lot going on. You've you got to take it into account quite a lot, right? But it's a fantastic way of building, um, well, first of all, stick and rudder skills and understanding what is happening aerodynamically. Um, but also, you know, it's a great, 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 great challenge. Uh, it's a bit more of a challenge to do some S-turns, but S-turns are kind of more realistic, I guess. You know, if you had to, S-turns would be the safer, you know, easier option. Um, 
So anyway, I think maybe for one of the next videos, um, stay tuned for a proper sidestep approach and I'll try and uh, talk you through uh, how to do it and why it might be applicable. Uh, but for now, if you've enjoyed this one, please make sure to smash the living daylight out of the like button and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Adios.